Hello there, Lunar Squadron. Welcome back to the channel. Today is a day that Nick and I have been waiting for for a very long time. It is about 10 years since the release of GTA 5, and we have finally seen the GTA 6 trailer release from Rockstar Games today. This just is such a monumentous occasion for gaming in general that we had to be here to break this one down for all of you. This trailer is only about 1 minute and 30 seconds, but that said, it is packed to the gills with details, and we're going to break it all down for you here in this breakdown today. But first, if you're new to the channel, we would absolutely love to have you. The way to do that is go down below this video, click that little red subscribe button, and be sure to click the bell notification button right on next to it. It's going to let you know every single time that Nick and I upload the latest and greatest AAA gaming content here on YouTube. That said, Nick, you ready to break this trailer down? Yeah, dude, GTA 6 is like real. It's not a thing anymore, like a rumor, it's real. It is real, and it's here. Let's break this down, guys. Now, since we're covering a new game today, I would expect a few new faces here on the channel. That said, here at Lunar Squadron, we break trailers down frame by frame, point out all those little details that you might have missed watching the trailer on a first impression. Nick, why don't we go ahead and start off with the first frame here. What a beautiful shot, just the lighting of this sunset or sunrise here. This is just one of those shots that I am always going to remember now as being that first trailer reveal shot for GTA 6. Like, what a big moment this is. Yeah, it really is, and it's a great opening shot. I love the play on the key art for GTA 6 with those sunset vibes. I think it's just a great way to usher us into the next era of Grand Theft Auto. Like, I'm still in a little bit of disbelief, Andreas, that we are entering the GTA 6 era. It's, it's just hard to believe that it's actually here. Oh, I am over the moon excited that this thing is finally here. And just to kick this off here, I really want to point out some of the finer details in this shot here because that's really what separates this game from the pack or what we anticipate will separate a Rockstar game from other games. It is those tiny details. Here, I want to point out the diversity in vehicles that we see on this overpass here. You just see Every single car or vehicle is different than the car next to it. This is something that we often see in open world video games where in one area there might be, you know, two or three of the same or similar type of vehicle, but here we're just seeing such a diversity in the types of vehicles. We see a truck that's towing a boat, we see a semi truck, we see several different types of buses like a tour bus, a motorcycle. There's just so much going on and then even in the backdrop we see a boat there uh, that is traversing on the water and then up in the sky we have a plane and then we have a flock of birds in the sky and even if you if you really want to get granular with this frame Nick you can see that telephone wire has a flock of birds Birds resting on the wire and that is such a cool detail that I love it just shows that perfect blend of nature with the city here of Vice City and if you look in the background that's going to be the next shot that we will look at Nick that looks like somewhat of a prison or a penitentiary or a jail and that's where we are going to ultimately meet our protagonist right Yes, it sure is. As this trailer continues, we get a shot closer up to the prison. We see the fencing with the barbed wire on top, that same sunset vibe. And then we see our main protagonist, or one of the two main protagonists of GTA 6, that being Lucia, locked away in her cell. And I gotta say, man, these graphics, the lighting, it just, it's so impressive in this trailer. If this truly is in-game footage, then we are in for something truly special with GTA 6. And one of the things that you will hear us harp on a lot throughout this breakdown is just how lively this game is and how dense this game is. You will just see that throughout this trailer. There's just so much going on in this world in GTA 6. I really do want to highlight the lighting here because, Nick, I know you are big into special effects and simulated lighting effects, and if I recall correctly, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the hardest things to simulate is the way that light passes through skin at a very topical level, and here we almost see that halo effect around her face and neck. And it just reminds me of how difficult that is to get with computer graphics. And here it's just executed flawlessly by Rockstar. 
Yeah, it really is. And you can see like those squares that are on the window, like the lining of the window being like the, the shadow of that being cast on her outfit. It's just very impressive. Just the details in this game are just like mind blowing, to be honest with you. Now, to go on further, we do see Lucia's having a conversation with someone that I believe might be her parole officer, and when asked how she got in the position that she is, she says, you know, just a bit of bad luck. I really do wonder if it is bad luck as to why she ended up in prison to begin with. I want to know exactly why she's there, but what we do know, uh, there have been rumors swirling for a while now that she will be involved in somewhat of a Bonnie and Clyde robbery relationship with another male protagonist who we will see later on in this trailer being Jason. We'll point him out the first time we see him, but Lucia is not a stranger to crime, and we assume that she will be turning back to crime as this story here does unravel. Now, Nick, this shot is one that I love because of all of the sea life that we see. This is vintage Miami. What we are expecting out of this game was a very lush coastal environment. And here, just right off the bat at the beginning of this frame, I'm seeing at the top of the frame a very cool yacht um, and just the water physics, the effects of that yacht going through the water here appears to be a stark contrast from the water that we remember from the Pacific Ocean in GTA 5, this being more of a lush and tropical ocean here. You can see through it. I think I can even see a few sea turtles under the water and that's going to turn to a theme that I want to bring up a bit later about underwater exploration, but how good does this water look, Nick? Oh my god, dude. The water physics of this trailer is insane. The wake being left behind, that yacht there, just the way the water interacts with the wildlife and the way people are able to manipulate it and just how good it looks. I mean, this looks like a real shot. Like, if someone sent me this, I would believe it's a real picture. That's how good this water looks. And as this shot continues, as the camera begins to pan up, this shot just gets more and more impressive because we finally see the beach. We see more wildlife. I know, Andreas, you were impressed by what you saw in the water with the types of vehicles, with the types of wildlife. You believe you even saw maybe like coral or seaweed there along the shore. It's just very impressive stuff going on. Just those little details that add up to make this game special. And then you see how densely populated the beach is. There's a lot going on on the beach. There's a lot of people. And then Andres, my big takeaway from this off the bat was just how big Vice City is going to be in this game. And I'm going to say that a lot throughout this breakdown, but they really pulled no punches with the size of Vice City here in this game. They really didn't, and I think this goes towards scaling, Nick, because if you recall, the way that they scaled Los Angeles down to Los Santos is one thing that at the time I thought was massive, but now looking at how they've scaled Miami into Vice City here is just mind-boggling, and, and of course there are the rumors again circulating about how this map is reportedly twice as big as the previous iteration of Grand Theft Auto, and this would definitely lend credence to that rumor because, by God, this skyline here shows so many buildings, and one thing, another theme that I am wondering as we will be progressing throughout this trailer is... How many of these buildings are we going to get to explore the interior of? How many of these buildings are window dressing to this open world and are just kind of there, not really serving any function? I'm really curious about that. And there's going to be a bit more later on that might suggest that we actually will be able to explore quite a bit of this city on the interior level. Yeah, definitely. And just as the shot continues, the one little detail that I think is fun that I want to point out is you will see in the background as the Rockstar Games logo pops up here, you see a plane pulling a sign that says 919. I wonder if this is a play on the 11 Club, which is a very famous nightclub in Miami, apparently. It's kind of the same style of layout with the wordplay, so I just wonder if it's just a fun reference to that club in Miami itself. As you all know, Rockstar is very popular for their parodies throughout GTA, so I would not be surprised if that is the case, and if that is the case, great catch, Nick. Now, as we progress along here, this next shot really goes toward my previous point, which is 
the interiors of buildings. We can see the interior of the building on the bottom of the frame. You can see like what appear to be ceiling lights. You can see the interiors pretty clearly through the windows of this building. And then on the rooftops, Nick, we see people are hanging out under umbrellas and palm trees. This building looks lived in. It doesn't seem to be window dressing. And more on that, if you look at the high rise, specifically the balconies on the high rise, I'm noticing tiny details about each of those different balconies. You see some of them have towels over the edge of the balcony. Some of them have surfboards or uh, life preservers. There's very tiny details that makes this tower look lived in. And again, that just plays up that theme of diversity in the content of this massive open world. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, I got to say my biggest takeaway from this shot, as you see the sun reflect off the windows here, how photorealistic this looks. This looks, again, like a real picture. I don't believe this is a video game. And the other thing I would like to point out that I've noticed a lot throughout this trailer, you can really see it here. There's a lot of air traffic in this game. There's a lot of airplanes in the sky. And I'm just thinking to the chaos that we're going to be able to cause in this game with that much air traffic. It's just for some reason, something I've really noticed. It's like, Every shot has an airplane in it or some sort of airliner in that shot. And I just think that's incredibly interesting. And then as we continue, we get a shot of what appears to be the Everglades of Florida being in this game. Just another location that we are going to be able to explore. Andreas, you mentioned how big this map is going to be in this game. And here's another location that we are going to be able to visit. And again, Andreas, it just looks so damn good. The lighting, the environment, the wildlife, it's dense, it's populated, it's lived in. It just doesn't look like a video game. It really doesn't. And what blows me away from this shot is the density and diversity of wildlife in this shot. When we think of GTA, we, we think of like diverse cities. We don't really think of the natural beauty. But this shot, Nick, if this were a National Geographic simulator game, I would be blown away by this shot, but it's it's a GTA game. And on top of that, it's also giving you the natural beauty and diversity that you would expect from Everglades National Park. This is something that I'm just blown away by in this game. And it doesn't just extend to the diversity of wildlife, we're also seeing a massive diversity in terms of NPC population in this game in both the diversity of player models. Notice how in this shot, Nick, which appears to be the South Beach of Florida, no two NPCs are alike in this shot. And not only that, but every single group of NPCs seems to be doing a different activity. If you look to the left of the screen, you can see that there is a guy applying sunscreen on a girl, and then there's three people walking, there's people going for a run with their dog, you see another guy down here who's taking a picture of a girl who's posing at the beach, you have people suntanning, just doing different recreational activities at the beach, I, I don't think I've ever seen a shot this diverse in terms of NPC type and NPC activity ever. And if this is a standard being set for the rest of this open world, then Rockstar is really just out there doing it again, pushing the bounds of what open world games can accomplish. Yeah, this is truly an impressive shot. Like you said, just look at what's going on. Look how dense this is. Everyone's doing their own thing. It's almost like they're not NPCs. They're acting like real people. We have so many unique different character models. Nothing is repeated. Everyone has their own unique look. I want to point out the draw distance in the background. Like, look how far away those skyscrapers are in the background there. Just the sheer, the sheer size and scale of this game. Look at all the air traffic. It's just... Every shot has so much going on. And if you've been with this channel for a long time, you know one thing that we love about these open world games, one thing that we loved about Marvel Spider-Man 2 was just how much more alive New York City was in the second game compared to the first game. And I gotta say, Andreas, I know this is just the first trailer. We're a few years away from this game. I cannot think of another video game, at least from first impressions, where I've seen a city or an open world this densely populated and alive. It's just insane to me. What I would be curious to do here is to compare this in like a side-by-side -side shot with the shot of the beach, the I think it was like the Santa Monica beach in the initial GTA 5 trailer and just see where we've come in 10 years. And if that's what Rockstar was going for with this shot, we've come a long way because this is one of those moments where I am truly feeling like we have arrived at next-gen gaming just given shots like these. Like, 
I cannot believe what we are able to pull off in this day and age. And off the back of that, this is another shot here showing the importance of aquatic sport and boating in Vice City. This is something that is no surprise to the Miami area. We would all expect boats to be a big part of the culture of Miami. And this looks like it is Port Miami. Uh, we're seeing a large boat hauling all sorts of freight and what appear to be cranes. And I'm again wondering, how far is Rockstar going to take this sandbox? Will I be able to drive this large ship in this game? Probably not, but man, that would be cool. I will say boat culture seems to be a big part of this game and that makes a lot of sense since it's taking place down in southern florida in miami i just wonder if there'll be like boat races this looks like a boat race compared to like you know your normal car races and stuff that we've seen in gta 5 and like gta online i wonder if they will be adding boat races to the game and into the online component of this game that's kind of my big takeaway from this shot now in this next shot here, we see our female protagonist, Lucia, who's hanging out of a convertible car. I believe it's being driven by the male protagonist in this game, Jason. And one thing that I would like to point out here is it appears that there is internal LEDs on the interior of the car. This is what I think is a new interior feature in standard production vehicles and a welcome inclusion in this game. I don't know if it's just the way that the light is reflecting off of the interior of the car, but it does look like to me that there is some sort of internal LEDs. One point that I am wondering is, if so, are we able to customize interior LEDs? How deep will the rabbit hole go on interior car customization? And again, just on the diversity of NPCs, you can see an NPC is hanging out of the window in a car in front of Lucia's car here, taking a picture of Lucia hanging out of her convertible car. So again, just a lot going on in this frame. And not only that, Nick, we can also glean a lot from the signage above the freeway here. Yeah, we sure can. I, I like this shot for a, a couple different reasons. One, we get to see what this game is going to look like at night, just kind of the nighttime environment of this game and what the lighting is going to look like. And to the surprise of absolutely nobody, it's very impressive. And then, of course, like you said, the signs reveal some locations in this game. We see that you will be able to take 404 West, which will, I assume, be one of the major freeways in this game, to Kelly County. I imagine this is where the Everglades location will be. If you guys take a look at a map of actual southern Florida and take a look at Miami, you will see that the Everglades National Park is to the western portion of Miami. So, that would make a lot of sense. Then we see that we can visit Vice City International Airport. That's no surprise. And then on the right there, we get a couple other locations. You know, you'll be able to take this exit to both the Stockyard and Downtown Vice City. So just some confirmation of the names and locations that we will be able to visit in Vice City. I imagine we're going to be able to visit a ton more locations than just this, but nice to put some names to some of these places. Up next here, we are getting a shot of what appears to be the lowrider culture of Vice City. Nick, the one thing that I want to illuminate about this is maybe we can come to expect some of the customization that will be in this game for automobiles. You can look at every single lowrider here, has so many different options that appear to be applied to each car. And it really makes me think of how much we will be able to do in the custom shops in this game. Of course, before we all are aware of Los Santos customs in this game, there will be different custom shops and I'm not expecting Rockstar to shortchange us in that regard. I would expect a wide variety of vehicle customization in this game. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I just want to point out a couple things and this is probably incredibly nerdy, but Besides just the impressive reflections and colors of these cars and just the overall look, again, very photorealistic, one thing that really stood out to me that impressed me about this shot was if you take a look at the sky and seeing the atmospheric color changes across the sky where you have more of that white haze there on the horizon and then it just kind of transitions the gradient into a deeper blue, it's just very realistic looking. It's just so impressive to me, the details that these devs think of when they're building these worlds, because I don't know if I would think of the change in the atmosphere from that white haze to the deeper blue as you get higher up, but they thought of it, they put it in this game, and what do you get? An incredibly real photorealistic looking game. Now the next shot that we get here is a look at the nightlife of Vice City. Of course we were expecting 
it is a Grand Theft Auto game. There will be nightclubs. And one thing that I want to point out is just how dense this shot is. You can see how much is going on in this nightclub. It's not just, you know, a couple people in a corner dancing. This is a lively scene with so much going on. Bottle service with sparklers. There is just so much going on here. And it really does make me excited to explore this open world. It's not just going to be an empty world. There's actually a lot going on. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't have much to add to this shot other than, again, densely populated, a lot going on at the same time here. Now, coming up next, we see this shot. And one thing that I want to point out about this is about customization when it comes to accessories on your player in this game. And I will expect this to eventually go into GTA Online once we reach that point. But if you recall back in GTA 5 and in prior iterations of Grand Theft Auto, accessories were customizable up to a certain extent. But what I'm seeing here is this guy is iced out. He has three different necklaces. He's got, I think, a wristwatch and a bracelet. He's got a ring and he even has grills like and on top of that, he's all tatted up like there is so much customization going on here and it's making me wonder if you are going to be able to apply that level of customization to the protagonists of this campaign and eventually to Grand Theft Auto Online whenever we do get to that portion of this game. Yeah, that's a really good point. I'm very interested to see what ends up happening in addition for the customization in GTA 6. Now, this next shot of the trailer, Andreas, might be my favorite shot in this entire trailer, and it's for a multitude of different reasons. I want you guys to just kind of take a moment and look at this shot, and every time you look at it, you will notice something new. First off, in the background, just again, how massive Vice City is going to be. The draw distance of this game is insane. Look at how alive the city is, all the, all the cars on the road, all of the boats in the water, the stuff in the air, the planes, the helicopters. You can take a look at the sky rises there on the, on the left, the apartment buildings. You see people out on their balconies doing things like these NPCs are living in this world. There's, you know, a bunch of different lights everywhere, foliage. There's just so much going on. The lighting is insane. The atmospheric changes with the sunset is insane. It's just, I could go on and on and on. It's just crazy to me that this is a video game. Like the leap in technology that games are starting to take with this next generation is becoming incredibly impressive. Like if you told me 10 years ago, we'd be looking at something like this. I would have a hard time believing you. It's just crazy where games are headed. That it is. And to kind of pick apart the density that we're seeing here, uh, just a couple things that I want to highlight. It looks like this might be a basketball court or a tennis court. It's making me wonder what sort of recreational sports there might be in this game. Just kind of thinking back to GTA 5 where we were able to play tennis. Maybe we're able to play tennis again or maybe even play something like basketball this time around. And the final thing I want to note here is it appears like this is somewhat of like a toll checkpoint. I'm wondering if you're going to get stars for passing through this toll checkpoint without paying for that toll or if you can get in trouble or if it's just not even going to factor into your traversal of this region just something that i'm generally wondering as we are seeing more and more of this open world and then we have this next shot where again we get a look at the nightlife of vice city you know i gotta say i just love the neon that rockstar is going with this in this game it just makes a ton of sense for miami and vice city and obviously it's something that we love we've used it in our branding for us here on the channel so i love the neon look of vice city we see a return of popular cars in this shot, of course, we see the cheetah there front and center, the white car right there. And it's just, again, NBC's living their lives in this city. So much going on, so many neon lights. It's just, I can't wait to get into this city, run around and explore and just do all of the activities that will be packed into this game. It'll be like, almost like living, but in a video game. It's going to be crazy. You know what else is going to be crazy, Nick, is... The fact that there's chameleons in this game, because that's right, guys, look at this NPC right here. He's got a chameleon on his shoulder. Chameleons confirmed in GTA 6. That is a wild development. Happy to see it. Now, this next shot is again showing more of that nightlife that we were all coming to expect out of Vice City. This is everything you could want out of a Miami simulator. You have the nightlife that you were expecting. You have the boats. And another thing that you have is the keys. Nick? 
how beautiful is this shot? It really is. I love this shot. Confirmation that there will be a highway that can take us to the keys. You know, I got to say, Andreas, that bridge on the right where it's broken there and there's like a jump there. Looks like we're going to have some fun messing around with that area. And another thing that I absolutely love about this shot is it's just a shot of the freeway. But every shot in this game has so much kinetic energy. I think that's a great way to kind of encapsulate this trailer. There's just a ton of kinetic energy. There's so much movement. There's stuff going on. There's no boring still shot in this trailer. We have boats going around and more air traffic and cargo ships and cars all over the freeway. There's just so much energy in each shot. I love that phrase. And in that regard, Nick, I think something subtly in the background here, but something that might end up being a big part of this game is if you look at this part of the shot, you can see what appears to be underwater topography changes and maybe even wreckage underneath the water. And that's making me wonder, just given that we are in the keys here, if there will be some sort of a snorkel or scuba component, just another dimension of exploration in this open world. I just am maybe even expecting that at this point, just looking at this shot and seeing the levels of topographical change under the water here, as we can see clear through this beautiful azure water of the Keys. Just how awesome is that? I love this shot so much. And one final point that I want to make is that there is a blimp at the top of the shot. So if you're worried about blimps being in this game, rest assured there will be blimps blimps, chameleons. I mean, Rockstar really isn't pulling any punches and we shouldn't expect them to. This is a game 10 plus years in the making and knowing their track record with Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA and all of their games, I expect this game to have everything in it once it releases. And here we have this shot. Andres, I don't take a whole lot away from this shot other than we'll be able to, you know, go outside on the balconies on high rises and that provides a lot of exciting potential opportunities to explore and maybe this adds some more evidence potentially for more explorable interiors and buildings and being able to, you know, have a more customized maybe apartment than you would in previous games in GTA 5, GTA Online and stuff like that. But other than that, I guess the draw distance again of Vice City and how massive it is would probably be my biggest takeaway from this shot, but I'm not getting a whole lot other than that. And coming up, we get the large Vice sign and again, more of those beautiful sunset colors in the background. And as we scroll along, this is where we see the start of a common theme throughout the next few shots of this trailer, and that is the presence of social media or TikTok culture, whatever you want to call it. it seems to be a social theme running throughout this game and something that Rockstar will maybe play on, just social media and the culture of social media. And one thing I am wondering is just seeing the faux posts at the bottom you can see there's like this post is from dad bod squad and it has a little follow button there i'm wondering if you are able to have an in-universe social media account in this game maybe pick up things from social media things that are going on in the open world maybe events things to do incidents things that are going on news other things i'm wondering how deep the rabbit hole is going to go for social media in this game because just from looking at the next few shots it does seem like there are is a diversity of accounts to be following and accounts that are posting in this universe and also a diversity of things that are going on in this world, whether it be yacht parties or just crazy incidents like this shot here of official poach just pulling an alligator out of a pool. Uh, Nick, I know you would probably love to be a pest control dude in Florida pulling a alligator out of a pool in this game. Like, doesn't that sound like a good time? No, that sounds very dangerous and not very fun at all. But I, what I will say is, is I do think social media, the fame around social media, social media culture, I think that's going to play a pretty massive role in the story of this game. And, you know, I wonder, you know, you think back to that earlier shot with Lucia and Jason on the freeway and it looked like someone was hanging out of the car in front of them filming them. I wonder if they'll be documenting their Bonnie and Clyde adventures on social media and getting like an increased level of fame and dealing with that. It's just kind of the the feelings I'm getting from this trailer and how they're really making a point of the social media and the culture that comes along with it and the fame that comes along with it. I do expect that to play a pretty sizable role in this story. Now, this next shot here, again, shows off the custom car culture in this game. And one thing that I want to point out here is 
how good these smoke simulations look, particularly if you're considering the way that the smoke in this shot interacts with the various lighting effects that are at play in this shot. I just think this is one of those shots that again screams next generation gaming to me. Yeah, this smoke simulation is very impressive as it disperses the, the particulates in the air and they get picked up by that lighting and you get that fog effect. Just very impressive environmental work here by Rockstar. Now again, we get more of the social media angle of this game here. And then this is my favorite shot of the trailer here as there is a massive Godzilla-sized alligator breaking and entering this Go Postal, which again, I love the play on words of the name of this convenience store here, Go Postal. It's just kind of funny to me. Um, and you can see it looks like it's somewhat of a gas station. I think those are cars in the front filling up gas. And, and I'm just loving the diversity of this world. Like if I'm just at a convenience store in this game and then an alligator can walk in the front door, like that's all the Florida vibes I'm looking for in a video game. I gotta say, I cannot wait to get jumped by an alligator randomly in the streets of Vice City in the online component of this game because one of my favorite memories from playing Red Dead Redemption 2's online is when we were exploring the mountainside and then you got randomly jumped by a mountain lion and it was just one of the funniest moments from that game and I cannot wait to experience that with an alligator in this game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now up next, we're seeing some body cam footage. It appears that police are breaching this building. I'm wondering what sort of illicit activities are going on on the inside. Uh, I am. I just have a feeling like this entry was uh, was deserved, just looking at the way that the people are kind of running away and it looks like they might be hiding some sort of evidence or something as chaos ensues here. But I am wondering how the criminal enterprise angle of this game will play out. We know there's going to be a bit of that. This is Grand Theft Auto after all. And up next, speaking of this being Grand Theft Auto, after all, we are expecting that level of humor out of Rockstar, and that's exactly what we get here as we see this dude in a Speedo is running away from law enforcement with the comment, usually gotta hit the strip club to see Jiggle like that for real. This is just classic vintage Rockstar humor here, and again, more of that social media influence here. And one thing that I want to point out, Nick, is the confirmed name for Florida, the state in this game, is going to be Leonida. Interesting name, right? Yeah, it really is. And another thing that we get from this shot is if you take a look in the back, we get to see more location names and additional street signs. We'll be able to see that you'll be able to go on 404 East as well. We know from earlier shots that you will be able to take 404 West to the airport and to Kelly County. But if you take 404 East, you will be able to go to Vice Beaches. That will be the name of the beaches and Port Vice City, which we saw earlier. And there is confirmation we will be able to visit the Keys. So just very exciting stuff. Huge open world. And again, just nice to get some names of some locations we'll be able to visit in this game. Now up next, I think this shot here is insightful in the custom car features of this game. We see on the back of this car, there is a decal on the back window of this pickup that says ride out customs. And then we also see on the left-hand side, wrap it like it's hot. So I'm wondering if car wrapping is going to be something that we can do in this game. And speaking of textures of a car here, I love this metallic paint job on this car where you can see those chips of paint reflecting light. That's just such a cool paint job and it really makes me wonder how deep that custom car rabbit hole is going to go in this game. Yeah, the lighting and coloring of this shot is insane. Like the car looks real. It's it's really crazy. And then this next shot is another one of those funny rock star level shots. But Andreas, I know one thing that you were really impressed by with this shot was just the level and density of foliage. That's absolutely right. If you just look at the overgrown landscaping here, you can see all sorts of different types of bushes, trees, weeds, pines, all sorts of things in this backyard. It's just something that would maybe be overlooked in a prior game as a boring backyard shot turned interesting with just a level of diversity in the nature of this game. Just again, showing that Rockstar can really do it all. It's not just the cities that they're mastering here. It is also the nature and all. On that note, Nick, I love this shot because it's showing that other natural dimension of this game. Maybe toward the Everglades region, we are seeing 
Thrillbilly Mud Club. It looks like there may be some sort of mud racing or, or ATV off-road racing, rally racing here. And on that, we're also seeing the way that the mud looks. It just looks really good. And, and the way that the light plays with that mud and how it is caked all over the NPCs here. Just again, impressive shots here from Rockstar. Yeah, it really is. And I'm going to have a lot of fun taking that monster truck in the back through the muds of the Everglades. Like this is going to be just another diverse location to explore. And, you know, maybe there'll be some monster truck races and stuff and obstacle courses. Like you see a little ramp there in the background, just a lot of opportunity being presented by these shots. Now, speaking of opportunity here, Nick, I don't know what else to glean from this shot other than the fact that we will have hammers as a confirmed weapon in this game. It just looks like, uh, you know, uh, this grandma here has two hammers and she's uh she looks like she's about to do something dangerous she looks kind of unstable and speaking of unstable uh this this table is pretty unstable after taking the hit here at what appears to be an absolute kegger of a party here in vice city yeah this is a really impressive shot just the coloring and lighting impacts it almost looks like cyberpunk with that neon mixing with the nighttime it's just really impressive and then the physics of like his drink spilling out as he's flying through the table and when he hits the ground the liquid goes everywhere just very impressive physic reactions from this game and i just love the lighting the reflections you can see the light reflecting off of the sweat of all of the npc's bodies like just in just very impressive again environmental work here from rockstar i'm just every shot i see i'm more and more impressed by what they're doing with their environment and world here now, up next here, we are seeing our male protagonist, Jason. He's driving this car past law enforcement, uh, presumably getting away from law enforcement or, or sneaking by law enforcement here as he is making his way with Lucia toward one of those anticipated Bonnie and Clyde style robberies here. We see that Lucia is clutching a handful of cash here, so maybe this is post-robbery, and then Another look here is of Weasel News making a return in this game. We know Weasel News from prior Grand Theft Autos. And just one point that I want to bring up about this shot is the overturned vehicle here and the way that law enforcement is pulling the individuals out of the car. I'm wondering if this is a story beat that is scripted or if this is going to be something that we can expect to see just playing out in the open world if there are car crashes or incidents like this which do play out in that manner. That would just be a really cool effect. And then up next here, we have this shot of what appears to be a very mentally unstable person in a penitentiary. This looks like, uh, you know, not someone I'd want to sit next to on a bus. No, I believe this is actually a play on a real event and news story that happened in Florida with a guy who dressed up like the Joker. I think this is a parody of an actual news event. Correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments, but I think this is like something that actually happened because, you know, Florida, that kind of stuff just happens down there. <laughs> yeah, we will see a play on the Florida man trope. If you guys didn't know, the Florida man trope is that if you Google uh, Florida man, you will see a variety of headlines of men in Florida doing crazy things. Um, and here you can see that play in the bottom of the Weasel News post in the banner, the text banner at the bottom, it says, Leonida man sucked up in water spout, demands the city buy him a new suit. Again, the Leonida man is a play on Florida man. So I, I again, just rock star with that classic tongue in cheek parody humor that we can come to expect. I really hope that there are actual water spouts in this game that we can go like throw ourselves into. That is my big takeaway from this shot. I, I really hope we can go mess around with actual water spouts because that that will be a lot of fun. That would be a ton of fun if we were able to do that. Um, the one thing that I want to point out in this shot is the back decal on that green car. You can see it says raised by ride out customs. Again, I think that might be one of the custom shops for cars in this game. And this shot just reminds me of that classic custom car GTA car race, like ricer culture that I would come to expect out of this game. And I think it would be no surprise to see that in this game. And speaking of big returns to Grand Theft Auto, Nick, Pisswasser, it's back. Yeah, it definitely is. And it will bring its healing properties, I'm sure, as always, very, very valuable healing properties to this game. And I love this shot. I just love how much 
is going on inside this little convenience store. Just look at the little details, the the chips and the drinks on the counter. It's just not empty. There's just so much packed into this little convenience store. It's very realistic. Yeah, it is. And you can see that uh, Lucia and Jason here are doing just a garden variety liquor store robbery here. And one thing that I'm going to be wondering is how these robberies, these Bonnie and Clyde type robberies are going to evolve. They might start with the liquor store, but then they might get bigger and bigger as the story unfolds to maybe even larger heists involving this Bonnie and Clyde couple here. And Nick, in the background, as we see they're drifting this car, there is pawn and gun. This could be a potential new gun store in the game. Of course, we are all familiar with ammunition. Now, maybe pawn and gun is the stand-in for ammunition. And one thing I'm wondering with that here is, are we going to be able to pawn things off? For example, can we steal items and then pawn them off for cash? Is that going to play into the robbery element of this game? I'm wondering if pawn shops in general are going to play into this game and be another element to push your criminal enterprise. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, really, the sky's the limits with this game right now until we learn more information, knowing how long Rockstar has been developing this game and just their track record. I mean, I feel like nothing is out of the realm of possibility. Nothing seems too large, too, you know, no, that's crazy. There's no way they could do that. Is that really a phrase we can be throwing around with Rockstar right now until we learn more information? I don't think it is. And Andres, one other thing I wanted to point out was something that you noticed while we were first going through this trailer, and that was the bumper stickers on the back of this car. Will that be a new customization option for vehicles in this game? You know, I could just think of a million different crazy and kooky Rockstar created bumper stickers could be in this game. It would be a cool level of customization to be able to procure from a giant bank of those bumper stickers and then apply them on your car. And this is a shot of our two protagonists interacting. You have uh, Lucia and Jason here. This shot, I don't know why, is just giving me like motel room vibes. It might just be like the furniture, the general lighting in here, um, and the layout, but it just makes me think of a motel. And on that note, just Nick, you saying like the sky's the limit with Rockstar. One thing I'm wondering is, are you going to be able to use motels and hotels in this game? Is that an element of this game? Uh, I could just be entirely off here and this could maybe not even be a motel, but just something that I'm generally wondering here. Yeah, and this shot just points to more of those Bonnie and Clyde type rumors we've seen, you know, hopping from motel to motel on the run in the vehicles with their the masks covering their face. Just each shot adds more and more to those rumors going around, and it's starting to believe that that is exactly what we are going to be getting out of the story, and that is a Bonnie and Clyde type escapade for our main protagonist, and we'll see if it will end in the same way that it does for the actual Bonnie and Clyde. I'm interested to see how far they actually go in that direction. And this trailer really does end on that Bonnie and Clyde note here as we do see Lucia and Jason breaking into Uncle Jack's Liquor. You can see the name of the liquor store here. And again, this looks a little larger than maybe the liquor store that we saw before. Again, suggesting that they are growing into their habits of crime and robbery in this game. And it does make me wonder, like you were saying, Nick, where is the limit of their criminal enterprise in this universe? Will they be growing into something larger and larger, maybe bank heists and more crazy robberies in this game? But the sky really is the limit for GTA 6. I just cannot wait to see all of the different mechanics, open world features, and all of the different bits and bobs in this game as we do approach its release. And of course, Nick, that is the biggest ending detail of this trailer, right? Yeah, it really is. We get the title sequence here for GTA 6. This was honestly a very surreal moment. Probably the most surreal moment of this entire trailer was just the reveal of GTA 6. Just seeing the Grand Theft Auto logo be revealed before the Roman numerals in the background. And just, you know, it's not GTA 5 anymore. That's been such a huge part of our lives for the past decade. GTA 6 is here. It is real. It's not just rumors anymore. It's not just speculation. This is a real tangible thing that we will be getting in apparently 2025. I know a lot of people wanted this game to come out in 2024, but I think it was always realistic just to expect a game of this magnitude in 2025. And hopefully it isn't one of those things where it's like late 2025 and then, you know, it gets pushed into 2026. Like I don't want to put that energy out into the world, but 
given the direction of gaming recently, I wouldn't be shocked. But I don't want to talk about that. This is now a time for celebration. The official first trailer for GTA 6 has been revealed. Of course, it was not revealed in the way that Rockstar wanted it to. And, you know, our condolences out to all of the devs and marketing people and just everyone at Rockstar who worked very hard on this game. You guys deserved better than that. You deserved to reveal this trailer in the way that you wanted to. So really our condolences to you guys for this one. But I got to say the game you guys are putting together looks incredibly exciting. I cannot wait to get my hands on it and explore the world you're you're building. It really, you can tell that this is a passion project for you guys and you've poured your heart and souls into this game. I know it's just the first trailer, but I cannot wait to learn more and see more about this game. Neither can I, Nick. This really is one of those surreal moments in gaming that I think we can all just come together and agree to be hyped for this game. It's one of those few instances where I think hype is welcome because Rockstar just cannot miss. And of course, I know they will not miss when it comes to Grand Theft Auto. It is just, there's just too much at stake for this series, for this game to be any less than remarkable, any less than perfection. And that is the standard that I am coming to expect out of Rockstar for GTA titles. And it's the standard that I think is reasonable after looking at this trailer and that said guys what do you make of the gta 6 reveal trailer are you impressed by this trailer are you as impressed by this trailer as nick and i are and what details or what features that we pointed out throughout this breakdown are you most excited to learn more about as we get closer to the release of this game whenever it does eventually come out hopefully in 2025 like you were saying nick let us know in the comments down below and we will be sure to interact with all of you down there and of course if you're new to the channel again we would love to have you please do subscribe to the channel you're all welcome to join the lunar squadron as we will be covering all things grand theft auto leading into release but with that guys that's going to do it for this one thank you all so much for watching and as always we will see you all next time